Thank you so much. Hi, everyone, and thank you guys for joining today. So my name is Rita, and I'm the account manager at Magnet. I support startups and ecosystem players and help you get to know more about Magnet and what we do. So to start off, let me go ahead and share my screen and we'll get right into the presentation. So Magnet is a data platform for emerging venture markets. We focus on MENA, Pakistan, and Turkey. And we support startups in fundraising. We support investors with underlying data to make decisions. And we'll go over our what is Magnet. We'll go over what data do we collect, what, it does, what does it look like, the fintechs in the MENA region, and then how this data can support you throughout your journey. And thank you so much for joining me. So we'll go on. So as I said, we're a startup for platform for emerging venture markets. Uh, we primarily focused on MENA for the past four years. Last year, we expanded to Pakistan and Turkey. And in terms of expansion, we started collecting data in those parts of the world. We're also expanding to Southeast Asia and Sub-Saharan Africa in the near future. And we've started the expansion exercise already. So we hope to soon roll that out. Now about us, we have 18,000 startups on our platform. We have around 4,000 investors and enablers. So that can range from, from VCs, angels, uh, incubators, accelerators. We also release research reports every single month. And we have over 120 at the moment and our audience is around 100,000. Now this data is supporting startups and investors. So let's say you are a startup and you're looking for competitors or you'd like to see if there's an opportunity for a merger and acquisition. We have that data to support your needs. We also have research. So we map out different industries such as the FinTech industry or the food and beverage industry and so on. And you can also connect to different players in the ecosystem. Let's say you want to connect to another startup. We have a feature similar to LinkedIn Connect, and you're able to utilize that and make new friends, build your network, and reach out to investors as well. We also publish newsletters, as Shireen mentioned, and you're able to go ahead and sign up to those. I would happy, be happy to show you how to do so afterwards. Now, if we look at the startups in MENA, in the fintech industry, we can see that for Q1 2021, there were 166 startups in the UAE uh, leading. And then in Egypt, there were 78 in case, say 52. So you can see that there's a lot of activity in fintech startups within the UAE. And there are a total of 410 within Q1. Now, if we look at the top funding uh, in Q1, we can see that there were quite a few deals made. So this was a list of top 10, but I just went ahead and shortlisted it. And you're able to go ahead and see that Sarabut Gateway, for example, raised 13.0 million, Nimcard as well, and several different investors and players. And this information is all available on the platform, as well as available in our research report that focuses on the FinTech industry. Now, also, if we look into the investor breakdown, we can see that investors within the MENA region that focus on the fintech industry, the UAE has most of them. So there is 30% of investors within, uh, the, within UAE and that focus on the fintech region. And the leading next is Saudi Arabia. And then afterwards is actually the US. So there are a lot of international investors within the fintech region within MENA. Now, how can Magnet support you? There are several different directories that we have and we can get into it. We do have a free trial that you can go ahead and access that gives you full access to all the directories, helps you shortlist whichever information you need. We have uh, the startup directory, investors, funding, limited partner tracker and exits, which I'll get into the demo right after this. And then as mentioned, we have our reports and we are currently hosting 80 plus investor applications on the platform that you can apply to for free at any given moment. Um, and then we will get into our questions and answers afterwards. So to start off with, we'll look into the investor directory on Magnet right underneath advanced search where we host over 4,000 investors. We're able to shortlist from those 4,000 and go ahead and look into the UAE and FinTech in specific. There are 28 different investors. And if we look through here, we can see which investors 
have the highest number of investments. So if we're interested in MEVP, for example, or WAMDEC Capital, or let's say Global Ventures, we're able to go ahead and pull up their portfolio, read a bit more about what they do, what their offering is, what their ticket size is, what industries they focus on, as well as if they have any other branches besides the UAE. And we're kind of able to go ahead and take a look into their startup portfolio and who they've invested in. Now, something that we've done and taken it to the next level is we verified every single funding round. So we know that this is a verified funding round. It happened in June 2021. The investors were Global Ventures, Doha Tech, and Dell. And you can see the same for the rest of the portfolio. A great way to use the investor portfolios is to take a look at the startups that they have invested in. And instead of directly reaching out to the investor, Global Ventures, you can reach out to the startup, get to know them a little bit more, ask them how their process was with the investor, ask them any uh, difficulties or challenges that they faced throughout their fundraising, uh, pick their brain a little bit and get to know the investor from the startup perspective before you reach out to the investor directly. But again, you can reach out to the investor directly here. And we have an apply here button, which means that they're hosting an investor application, which we will get into. And then further, if you wanna see any of the team members and do your due diligence, you're able to access the information right underneath the profile of the investor. And we're able to click on the actual uh, team member. You can connect directly to the team member as well, read a bit more about them, connect with them on LinkedIn as well and then get to see all of the startup relations that they have right underneath their startup profile. We'll also see any relevant news to the investor listed below. So anything up to date will be listed and tagged with Global Ventures and you're able to see what they've been up to. Now, if we move on to FinTech startups, so if we look at the startup directory where we have over 18,000 startups, we're able to go ahead and shortlist again. What's great about this directory is that there are many more filters that you can go ahead and utilize. So let's say you wanna look into the founder gender or if you wanna look at the development stage of the startup and you wanna find startups that are in the seed stage, FinTech and UAE, for example, we can go ahead and shortlist 82. We can see the funding that they've received up to date and we can go ahead and view the profile similar to how we viewed the investor profile. Now underneath here, you'll, you'll be able to see if they have any geographical focus, if they have any branches or any industry, sub industries that they're working in besides FinTech. We're also able to see the investors that have invested in them historically. So we're able to see that in December, 2020, they raised 23 million and we are able to see all of the investors part of that round. And then again, any team members, as well as up-to-date information, I highly suggest connecting to startups directly, getting to know a bit more about them and picking their brain as mentioned. I think this is a great way in to also get a connection with the investors. Maybe they can refer you, uh, maybe there's a chance for a greater relationship. Now, moving on to our funding rounds. So every single funding round that we saw under the startup profile or under the investor profile, for example, is put into one funding round directory. We do have a verified by magnet tag. If this is unchecked, then it also counts self-funded rounds and angel uh, self-funded rounds and friends and family rounds. So I suggest looking into the verified map by magnet tag. Again, we can look into UAE and FinTech. If you're interested in looking into investments primarily made by VCs, for example, or let's say we're also interested in accelerator um, investments, we're able to go ahead and use that as well. We don't have accelerator under here, but VC would fall underneath that, uh, but we can look into fund of funds, for example, or holding company and so on. Now we're able to see who are the most active investors within this industry. So if you go ahead and show more, you're able to see Anthemis has invested two rounds in Now Money. We're also able to see that Bico Capital is an active player. Global Ventures invest in uh, FinTech quite often and also MEC. So it kind of gives you an idea of the most active investors within this industry. You're also able to see the average ticket size uh, for the specific round that you're looking into. So let's say we're primarily looking into seed funding, for example. We're able to see that it's between, for example, the lowest that was received is 100,000. The highest was 7.5 million. You can kind of get an idea of the average ticket size. This won't give you the most accurate ticket size, but it'll give you some sort of idea. 
And then again, we're able to connect to the startup or we're able to connect to the investor directly as you wish. And then lastly, one of my most favorite directories that we've recently released is our limited partner tracker. Now this tracks any fund of fund and how much funding that they've uh, raised up to date. So let's say we're interested in primarily looking into funds that focus on the FinTech industry. And we wanna see when have they recently closed and how much have they raised for their fund. And this would be a great way to target different investors. Um, it's, it doesn't necessarily mean that they have the cash ready in hand uh, just because they have raised a hundred, a million for their fund, but at least it gives you an idea of what they may be working with. So for example, Hambro Perks Oryx Fund, we're able to see that they have a $50 million fund, Jada Fund of Funds, uh, invested in them as well as SVD, SV, SVC and then Riyadh Valley Company. Uh, so we're able to go ahead and read a bit more about Oryx Fund. We're able to see what startups do they invest in historically. We know that they focus on fintech because of our filter and maybe this would be a good lead, someone that you'd want to do more due diligence on and read a bit more about their portfolio and, and what they look for in a fintech startup, for example. And the same applies to the rest. Now, lastly is the exits directory. I'll just, just touch on this very lightly. All of our exits are put into this directory. Any company that has gotten acquired uh, and how much they got acquired for if that's shared with the ecosystem. So one thing I do want to mention, sometimes it does say undisclosed for the amount and it says undisclosed for the stage. That's primarily if the information was shared with the ecosystem. If the investors wanted to disclose that or if the startups wanted to disclose that, then we have that information. And another thing I did want to mention for Verified, we have a data and research team that focuses on verifying all of our data points uh, by linking any third party article to those funding rounds. We also do regular outreaches to our ecosystem. So every single quarter we reach out to over 700 investors and enablers within the region to update their information, update their funding rounds. And we've set up APIs so that this information is coming in on a regular basis. And then lastly, investors and startups come to us directly, directly and share their news and we announce it with the ecosystem. So for the exits, you'll see any company that has gotten acquired, who they got acquired by, and then the amount if they have shared that with us. Now, moving on to, I think one of the most exciting things is the investor applications. Now up at the top, you'll see resources and you'll find apply for funding. And in here we host 86 investor applications. This number is ever changing. Sometimes we'll need to go ahead and unpublish some because the deadline has expired. Uh, some of them have a certain cap to how many applications they're expecting. So right now we have 86, sometimes it can go up to 120 and keep on fluctuating. Now let's say I'm a FinTech startup and I'm located in the UAE and I'm in the seed stage. I'll wanna go ahead and shortlist from the 86 so I can focus my efforts on those that directly apply to me and my startup and my industry. Uh, let me go back one second. Sometimes this does not work. So FinTech will do, okay, say for example, and we'll do seed. Apologies about this. <laughs> we'll do a more uh, generic industry. One second. E-commerce, United Arab Emirates, and we'll look into the seed stage, for example. If you're ever having issues with the applications or anything on the platform, you're more than welcome to go ahead and send an email to support at magnet.com and we'll support you. So let's say I'm an e-commerce startup and I'm located out of UAE and I'm in the seed stage and I'm looking for seed funding. I'll go ahead and put in these filters. I'll look through the 35 that apply to me. And let's say plus venture capital applies to me and I'd like to know a bit more about what their offering is, what they're looking for and so on. So I can go ahead, pull up the application. I'd also wanna pull up the investor profile, read through it once more, do your research, look into what they're offering, look into how they operate. Also any startups that they've invested in, Plus VC is a new VC, um, so there aren't any startups on the profile that they've invested in for now, um, but other ones you will be able to see. And then if this fits my criteria, I'll go ahead and click on apply here. 
and I'll either create my startup profile, we can support you in creating your startup profile, or I'll select it if it's already been created. Now I'll go through all of the steps. I'll submit my elevator pitch, my company information, any funding information, the startup team information, and then additional questions. Now, one thing to know, every single application has different additional questions. So once you fill out one application, numbers one through five will be the same for all applications. No need to keep refilling it. But the number six step, you'll wanna go ahead and pay special attention as there will be different questions. Once you go ahead and fill it all out, you can go ahead and submit it and you'll find applications, my applications, applications applied right underneath your dashboard. You can view your submission. You can see the status of your submission. If an investor is interested in moving forward, they'll go ahead and accept your application. Doesn't necessarily mean that the funding is going to be given to you automatically, but they'll accept your application and they'll reach out to you for the next steps. Now the next steps may be getting on a phone call, maybe scheduling an online call, maybe meeting in person. It primarily depends on the investor. I would give it two to three weeks to receive a response just because Magnet is not the only platform that they are applying, that startups are applying through. Um, so just a bit of time. If you are receiving um, application uh, submissions or you have any questions about the submissions, then go ahead and send us an email. We're more than happy to support you through that. Um, and that is it. Last two tools that I do want to mention for a startup that would be very, very useful is at the bottom, we have announce your funding and share your story. Now announce your funding, let's say that you've received funding and you wanna go ahead and share it with the ecosystem and break the wonderful news with us. You're able to go ahead and fill out this type form. The marketing team receives it. And once we receive it, we go ahead and reach out to you and support you through announcing that through our platform and sharing it with the ecosystem. Another thing that we do have is share your story. So let's say there's a press release that you would go ahead and like to share with us, maybe on a topic that you are well-versed in or something that um, is a thought piece that you'd like to share with the ecosystem, feel free to go ahead, submit your story and our marketing team will be reaching out to you in, in regards to that. And that is Magnet in a nutshell. Do we have any questions? I'll just look at the questions and answers and we can go through them. Any tools that you guys would like more information on or any questions you have about the ecosystem or investors, I'm more than happy to support. You can uh, submit them in the questions and answers box. And we're more than happy to take the questions via email if you guys would rather that or if you'd like to schedule a one-on-one -on -one call, my colleague Emma would be more than happy to support. I do see something in chat. How long does an average funding round take? Well, it primarily depends on the stage of the startup that you're in. So it's very difficult to answer that. Um, and it depends on the growth of your startup. Let's say that you're looking to raise a seed round. Um, it, I, I don't have an exact answer. I'm not sure, Shireen, could you possibly touch base on that question? How long does an average funding round take? I think it's very situational. Okay. so. I will tell you what one VC told me. She okay. compared it to the duration of um, getting pregnant. So she was like, the average fundraising round takes nine months in the Middle East. Um, the reality okay. is this is an SF, right? People don't come to demo day with checkbooks. Things do take a while. So just keeping in mind that average, of course, there are rounds I've heard of that have closed sooner. There are some rounds I know that have taken longer. Um, the idea is kind of think ahead and plan for your cash flow accordingly. Awesome. Thank you so much, Shereen. Any other questions? Thank you, Dimagio. <laughs> um, do you expect the startup to have a local registered office before applying for funding or they can apply for funding first and then register later? Great question. Um, it primarily depends, again, on the investor that you're applying to. Maybe they'll want you to al already have a base in the UAE or let's say in KSA before you go ahead and apply for funding. Maybe some investors are okay to help you with that registration and licensing process. So I think it, it comes down to the investor. And again, I'm gonna have to ask Shireen to touch base on this if that's okay. Uh, but, I, but I do think it 
it depends on the investor and the investment type that you're getting. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, any others? Okay. Well, we're more than happy to support um, via email. We're more than happy to get on calls with you guys. Uh, oh, what what is a typical deal size for early stage for early stage COS? So depends on uh, how badass your pitch book is. <laughs> That's what I, would say. I, th I think. Do you all, agree, Tita, or not? <laughs> I think yes, definitely. But I also would use our data to go ahead and identify what is the typical deal size for early stage. Um, again, we can go into, for example, the funding round directory and we're able to look into the early stage fintech startups or let's say e-commerce and you're able to kind of get the, t I, the average deal size of early stage startups. So you'll find let's say United Arab Emirates, and let's go back to FinTech, for example. And let's say that seed stage startup. And again, we can go ahead and kind of get an average of this. It, it won't give you an exact average, but it'll give you some sort of idea. And it also give you an idea of what the investors invest in. So I would use the data to find that exact answer. Any other questions? There's another question there for you, Gita. Oh, I see it. Okay. How long does an average funding round take? I'm right in thinking there are pitch book templates, et cetera, provided by Magnet. Great question. Uh, we do not provide any pitch book uh, templates. We do not provide any sort of term sheets or any, any sort of template of that sort. We're primarily here to share information about the ecosystem and share data. However, we do have some really great articles that we've written by our community manager and by uh, several other people in the marketing team as well, um, and the data team on how to create the perfect pitch book, how to reach out to investors and how to connect with investors. And you can find that underneath the newsletters. You can go ahead into uh, resources and, or news actually, and newsletters. And underneath here, you're able to see um, the most uh, up-to-date information on, for example, how to reach out to investors, how to create your perfect pitch deck. You can also search here and look for um, our articles uh, right at the top right hand. Uh, but I think industry news would be the best place to go ahead and do that. Um, so no templates, so to say, but I'm sure there are plenty of other uh, platforms that may have templates on how to create the perfect pitch deck. Uh, you can reach out to other startups within the same industry and same, uh, let's say, country that you are based in and see how they've done their uh, pitch decks, pick their brains, connect with investors, connect with uh, ecosystem players. And I'm sure there's plenty of help out there. Let's see, there's another question. Okay. Got that. Thank you. All right, Rita, thank you very much for attending and for giving the presentation. Um, and thank you everyone in the audience for coming. Thank you all, it was a pleasure and please feel free to reach out to us. We're here to help. Bye-bye. <laughs>